Hello, I'm Jo Parrott. I'm the founder of the Ladies Working Dog Group. I hope you are enjoying our podcast. I'm happy to be joined by... Hi, my name's Gemma Martin. I'm one half of Whistle and Wag Dog Training based in Suffolk. Hi, I'm Claire Denya from Family Dog Services based in Maidstone in Kent. Hi, I'm Sam Thornycroft Taylor of Langle Dot Gun Dogs in Gloucestershire. Hi, I'm Emma. I run Cunning Shot Dog Training based in Leicestershire in the East Midlands. Today we're going to be talking all about things that are common in post-lockdown dogs. So, ladies, you're all out on the fields training and having to deal with the dogs that have been purchased during lockdown or dogs that were part of families before lockdown but have now come across their own issues what are the sort of the four main lockdown dog problems that you're seeing at the moment the four probably the main common ones that I'm seeing post covid lockdown are separation anxiety fear aggression dog to dog aggression and general over excitement and the inability to control themselves when they're put in situations with other distractions such as other people other dogs um and all that sort of stuff and were these sort of problems that you saw commonly in dogs before lockdown i think me personally i did we did see them but maybe not in the volume that we're necessarily seeing them now so um and dogs that didn't necessarily have the problems on the surface before lockdown so dogs that were already in family homes before lockdown hit not necessarily just the puppies um had a massive change in their life part way through some form of of maturity and growth um and now obviously then life changed and then it obviously changed back again and not everybody gave their dogs enough of that chance to kind of readjust back to life before lockdown yeah, definitely. And although these are problems that we have always seen in dogs, I would say some of these cases are bringing themselves out in slightly different ways to maybe how we've seen them before. So, um, for instance, if we look at the dogs, the separation anxiety, separation anxiety has always been around. Separation is, anxiety has always been a problem that as behaviourists, you know, we get called about this and go and see dogs. But now the causes are different, but also sometimes we're looking at these dogs and actually it's not true separation anxiety. We're seeing a lot more attention seeking behaviours, which owners are very commonly misinterpreting as separation anxiety. For us to get a clear understanding, what is separation anxiety before before lockdown? What did separation anxiety look like? For me, the the biggest signs that I saw were obviously fear of being left. Um, But that could go down to a fear of being left in a vehicle. It can come from like an owner not even able to leave the room all the way up to that they actually just can't leave the house. So there's a massive spectrum of separation anxiety. Um, And the behaviours that the dog shows aren't necessarily what you would class as Um, like common signs of anxiety sometimes dogs actually just going to sleep in the corner of a room not in their normal place or normal bed could be anxiety versus the more typical signs that people call us for which is like a neighbor's complaint because the dog barks and howls all day or it pees on the floor every time it leaves the house and stuff like that so there's a massive spectrum of what they're actually anxious about and how the behavior manifests itself as well. Claire you mentioned that you're seeing things that people are diagnosing themselves or self-diagnosing as separation anxiety, but it's more of, of a different type of behaviour. What, what are people seeing that they are misdiagnosing? For instance, we might be getting calls from people who are saying that their dogs um, are barking the minute they leave the room. They're following them around constantly. So rather than seeing things where the owner's left, and as Em just said, you might get the neighbours report howling, barking, the the owner might come home and find toileting. Um, The dogs are actually just very needy and they haven't been given any of that, what I would call enforced separation. So one of the things we're very careful with when we talk to puppy owners is we talk about giving the puppy periods of enforced separation, especially in times where uh, people are working from home. The dogs become very reliant on having the owner in the home or even in the room with the dog. And what's not happening is the dog isn't learning to be able to cope 
with the owner even leaving the room. So these dogs are completely reliant and these dogs are completely needy and they will vocalise and they will do attention seeking behaviours. So they might nick things like the remote control to get the owner's attention. Um, They might run off with things and hide them and chew them up. Um, Barking is very common, scratching at the doors, whining. And, you know, these owners are saying, I literally can't go up the stairs to the toilet without this dog creating a commotion downstairs. Um, But it's actually mostly attention seeking. The dog is doing it to get attention. I think added to that as well, Claire, I've seen quite a lot of people with especially new puppies that aren't giving their puppies time out at all. So the puppies are out with them constantly while they're working at home. Um, And as a result, they're not getting the sleep that they need. So they're being overstimulated and just running riot around the house. And these owners are are at their wits end saying, what is wrong with my puppy? Why is it so wired? Um, And it's mainly because they're not getting the the sleep that a puppy needs. I mean, we're talking 18 to 20 hours a day for a puppy and they're getting probably two. Added to that as well, I think we've got to bear in mind, obviously, through lockdown the majority of people that were working suddenly started working from home so whether they got a puppy in that period or whether they had another dog I know I've had a lot of my clients have said their dog has now developed behavior which they're calling separation anxiety as Claire said it might be more attention seeking behaviors but in their defense I suppose or their reasoning they've said you know if I'm on a call for the best part of an hour, two hours, I can't have my dog barking and howling and whinging in the background whilst I'm trying to work. So a lot of these behaviours have come in because they have, um, without wanting to, sort of gone with what the dog is asking. If the dog is going to howl, if it's in a, a crate or a room next door and they can't have that when they're busy on their call, then they've gone and let it come into their workspace and keep giving off all these attention seeking behaviors that they've then tried to calm through petting, stroking, anything else like that, on account of the fact they were just trying to work. I think as well, um, if you look at most people's mental state when we first initially went into lockdown, nobody, unless you had your whole family around you, but even then people wanted their dogs with them, like they're there for their companions. Most people obviously buy, buy a dog for a companion. And it was quite a stressful time, I think, for a lot of people to mentally cope. And that dog then gave them kind of a little bit of a release. It was your one bit of exercise a day and it was a companion to be at home with you um, while you were not able to go anywhere or do anything. Um, And I think as well in that period, then what you could what you can do is actually have undone a lot of the older dogs that had that kind of forced separation as a puppy because they had to go to work and they had dog walkers maybe come in and things like that you then undo all of that almost as quickly as as you've done all of the hard work you undo it really quickly and that therefore dogs create you created the behavior basically um without meaning to and like sam said obviously sometimes you've had to um put things in place that you maybe didn't want to do because you needed to you needed to work yeah, because we saw quite a lot of stuff on like Facebook. There was like cartoons, like the dog on top of the kitchen cabinets, and the like, dog was like, please don't make me walk again. Because the whole family was home. Everybody took the dog everywhere as, as a reason to get out to exercise, to get out of that, that cabin fever they were feeling themselves. The dog was a perfect way of, of being a reason to get out and therefore the dog had more attention than it, it probably ever had or ever will it was a very unusual time so that from what you're saying these sort of different behaviors have come about even with older dogs because they had a change in their circumstances their environment their habits when we talk then about um, some of the other problems like the the fear aggression what's caused that so in my mind, a lot of the, the fear aggression has come about because through lockdown, there was less chance to go and obviously socialise with other people. So things that you would normally have done as a matter of course with a new puppy and new introductions and habituations that you'd have done, we didn't do. Um, so they missed out in very informative periods of their life. They missed out on really important aspects of training, growing up, getting used to all different um experiences but also for me the the fear aggression or even the dog to dog aggression 
I think a lot of it has come about because when you pre-COVID, if you got your first puppy or you got a dog, you would go for a walk down the road. And if you saw someone coming the other way, you would potentially sit your dog up and teach it to be calm and be nice and have manners and respectfully meet the other dog. And you'd stop for a chat with the other owner, whether or not you knew who they were. And then lockdown came in and we were given all these social distancing guidelines. So you'd walk down the road and if you saw someone coming the other way, your instinctive reaction was to cross the road. So you've not had any of that mutual meeting and chatting and this is okay and say hi to this dog on my terms in a nice behaved way what you've done is say oh my god there's a dog coming leg it and so the dog on the end of the lead is then sat there going oh my god there's something wrong with this dog coming the other way and it has progressed that way I think as well um human anxiety had a massive part to play I mean lots of people were terrified of coming across people they did know or didn't know And that's obviously going to transfer straight down the lead. And whether you've got an older dog that was very social and um, well-mannered seeing other dogs, again, you can change behavior as as quick as you can, you can fix a problem, you can create a problem. Um, So puppies and older dogs suddenly had no interaction and possible anxiety going straight down their lead. Not to mention, I know a lot of clients that spoke to me said they didn't let their dogs have as much free time off lead because they were worried that their dog was going to go and say hi to another dog. And they then had to go into that social interaction. So they kept the dogs on lead more. Um, and obviously with that, you you get more anxiety down the lead and things like that and, and more signals down that lead. And the, the dogs get frustrated as well. So dog, dog aggression and fear aggression is almost being mixed with frustration as well, because you've either got a puppy that's never been off the lead or you've got an older dog that's been used to free time and being off the lead and being trained off the lead that's suddenly now on the lead 24-7 as well. Yeah, and that's something that I've seen an awful lot of. I mean, obviously, we are seeing the fear. Um, the dogs are actually, you can see them. The minute they see another dog and owner approaching, you're seeing a lot more anxiety in the dogs than you more, normally would have done. But seeing a hell of a lot of frustration, um, a lot of dogs that I think where the owners have been, as you were saying, Emma, have been very restrictive with the dogs. The dogs suddenly don't know how to cope when they're actually now being put in positions where actually the owners are almost encouraging them to move forward. And the dogs aren't used to that. The dogs, the dogs have been used to being held back, restrained, restricted, turn the other way, walk the other way, avoid people cross the road. Um, and now actually they're like, well, why isn't my dog very sociable? Why is my dog not wanting to meet other dogs? So the dogs are now being pushed into situations that they haven't been prepared for. And I think that's where I'm seeing some dogs are frustrated and other dogs are, are virtually terrified because they're being put in situations that they haven't been educated on how to actually cope with um, during. I mean, it went on such a long time. And I remember at the beginning of lockdown saying, I think this will be really good because we're going to have a lot less dogs out of control um, running around the the park, running up to other dogs and terrorising them. But the fact that it went on for as long as it did meant that actually the dogs were missing out on a lot of things that are necessary um, for them to learn and develop and grow. I think as well, when you look at the different ages um, of the dogs that went through lockdown, the puppies are almost kind of pre-teenage phase now. And they would have gone through all of their puppy um, growth mentally, but then they'll have also possibly gone through a secondary fear period, possibly as we're coming out of lockdown and you're forcing them into situations socially because everybody's gone, right, they've missed out. So they really need to get out and be social. Um, And then on the other hand, you've also got some of the older dogs that will have regressed by being kind of restricted to what they can and can't be doing that then will have gone through a fear period, maybe slightly later than they should have done, because obviously their development's been kind of stunted a little bit. So you then got two sets of age groups that have really, really suffered. um, And some of the age groups that I've seen that have suffered with anxiety and what I would class as a kind of secondary fear period can be all the way up to kind of three years old now, which normally would be a mature adult dog able to cope with life. But it's now almost an 18 month old mentally age mark. I suppose as well, we can add to that the fact that during lockdown, because um, there was such a large request for pups, we saw a huge spate of thefts. So then 
people, even when they could go out and see people a little bit more, we all became very fearful of when other people approached us, what their intentions were. So, you know, would that have played a part in this sort of fear aggression with, with other dogs outside of those age range we've just spoke about? Definitely, because you go back to what Em said about um, getting the anxiety and the fear down the lead. So if you're walking through a park, you've gone for a nice gentle bimble and all of a sudden you see uh, a group of lads walking towards you. They're all wearing hoodies and you look at them and you think, oh, I'm not sure about this. There's been a lot of dog thefts in my area. The instant that you tense and go, oh, your dog goes, what? What we do? Oh, we've got to be scared of something. Um, so definitely it all comes back to sensing how the owner is feeling and it therefore penetrates down to the dog. And when we talk about there, we talk about fear aggression, which has been potentially created by our behaviour as humans. But then obviously we spoke a little bit or we just touched on dog, a dog with other dogs, sort of aggressions and frustrations. They're all sort of related, aren't they? Yeah, I think that. The dog dog interaction is has come across purely from lack of it, basically. So because we've not gone out and the puppies puppy section hasn't had puppy classes, socialization, um, constructive off lead play, meet and greet politely when you're told to on and off lead, all of that kind of stuff. They've never really developed those behaviors. And they may have only also really had dog dog interaction from from other dogs in the home or none at all, which we also know just because you've got an existing dog at home does not mean your, your puppy's going to be well socialised. They need to be out on their own meeting other dogs and, and form their own personality and behaviours. The older dogs will have had their socialisation puppy bit before lockdown. They were, then will have had a massive gap where owners will have been anxious about going to meet other people and things like that. And then they will have been thrown back into group classes because they wanted to everybody, everybody's owners have obviously wanted to go back to kind of what they were pre pre lockdown. Um, so you've got huge changes from absolutely nothing being done because you've because there's been a puppy in lockdown to loads being done with a puppy, nothing being done with a maturing adolescent to right. You're an adult now. You should be able to cope with life. Um, and that, I think, is really, really confusing for both of those age groups. And it's only going to cause dog dog behavior confusion um and i think that's that's mainly what it is it can border into aggression and it can border into pr frustration but i think most of it is confusion because dogs aren't aware of how to act around other dogs and i think to expand on that it's easy for us to rationalize we can <clears throat> speak to other people we can read the news we've had ideas as to what changes might be coming and we can start to get our head around them before they've actually arrived um but as Emma said just then, with the older dogs, that potentially they had a good start of their training journey and then they did absolutely nothing for a bit. As an owner and as a handler, it's very easy to go, well, it's OK, we were doing that before. So this is where we jump straight back into. But actually, we can't discuss it with the dog. We can't say to the dog, OK, we had this blank period, but we were doing this before and it's going to be absolutely fine. And this is where we're going back to which I think, again, is where a lot of the problems have escalated from because we're just expecting the dog to pick up from where it left off and it's not mentally or emotionally able to do so. That's exactly right. And I remember when we were coming back from each of the lockdowns, we were very careful when we were bringing the dogs back into group training class scenarios. And I would say, look, I know that before we left off before lockdown, I know we were doing X, Y and Z, but we need to actually get these dogs comfortable working around each other again today. We don't know how the dogs are going to feel. They haven't been in a group like this for months. Um, so we need to take things very steady and make sure the dogs are comfortable with that. And I think actually what we saw and, and it goes through all of whether we're talking about fear, aggression, anxiety, um, all of those things, frustration. What we were just seeing, if you wanted to generalise it, was say, well, actually, all these dogs are now lacking in canine social skills. That's the bottom line. They are all lacking in having canine social skills. They're not reading each other's body language as well as they were. Some of them were just so excited to see other dogs because it had been such a long time. Others were really overwhelmed by that experience. So being really careful coming back into group classes was really important. 
the last sort of problem we wanted to look at, and it sort of feels like it's attached to all the others as well. And we have loads and loads of new owners at the moment who, who this might be the first time they've ever had a dog. So they're not really sure what they need to be doing themselves. And then you've got dogs that have been sort of withdrawn from normal dog life um, and then been reintroduced to it. Has that created like lots of the over excitement that we're seeing across the board? Are you walking uh, your dog in the park now? There's just like lots and lots of crazy little dogs. Yeah, I think reactivity in general um, can obviously be over excitement or it can be aggression, frustration. So there can, there can be both branches of it. Um, and I think it because of not only the lack of socialization that these dogs have had on a regular basis through lockdown, but then also the sheer increase in volume of dogs over lockdown has meant your normal walk on the park where you would meet three or four dogs maybe and have a chat with some of them and train through or train with other people has suddenly become that you've got 10, 15 dogs that you're coming across that are all in the same situation. So it's almost like putting a load of reactive dogs all in one area in one space together plus owners that are anxious about coming back out into real life which is always going to cause issues so I think that's where the over excitement's coming from as well is that the, the sheer volume of dogs has increased on a dog's normal routine and normal walk when you've gone back from lockdown and I think as well because I mean you when a dog gets to the teenage phase of its life it's bound to in some ways or aspects push the boundaries push its training push its owner how how far can I go what can I get away with what do I absolutely have to listen to um and a lot of the over excitement that's coming in now is an escalation of what we would have seen potentially pre-covid because there's a lot of dogs that have come out of lockdown in that teenage phase so they've suddenly got the world being thrown at them on top of their hormones racing around and them not having a clue how to react to it. So whereas before they would have had a sort of slightly firmer grounding within their training lives and their upbringing, now they've got the outside world and the inside world with their hormones and they're all mixing and rushing together. And these poor dogs have just got this massive explosion around them going, I, I just, what do I do? And I think their answers are, for, from the dog's point of view, sort of some of the problems that we've spoken about, either excitement or aggression, um, and then obviously separation anxiety hanging in there too. And I've had a couple of very recent cases where I've had owners contact me who their dogs were struggling being left alone now that the owners are, are going back to work. And what they hadn't given thought to um, is they now suddenly want the dogs to be able to cope with things like either a dog walker coming into a stranger coming into the home or if they want to put the dog into doggy daycare them dogs have never experienced that kind of thing and I will have a long conversation about them and sort of say look if that's the way you need to go this is what you want to look for you don't want to be looking for somewhere where you're just throwing your dog in and your dog is being left to fend for itself and having to you know defend itself from bully dogs or, or become a bully any of those things and the dogs just haven't been prepped for those kinds of things and and then they wonder why they're out for a walk and those dogs that they didn't think had problems suddenly we're seeing lots of frustration on the lead we're seeing dogs that are vocalizing more than ever and and it and it could be you know nervousness of, of dog walkers coming into the house it could be nervousness of going into a van with that a dog walker might be driving around with multiple dogs or even putting a dog in a daycare situation which them dogs have not been prepped for mentally I think as well, if you think about what dog walkers and daycare, they're going to also be, as the trainers, as trainers have been, completely inundated with new clients because everybody is trying to be pushed to go back into work, even if it's a few days a week or a few hours every day. So those walkers and daycares are going to be at full capacity, which equally means that actually when you only had maybe one or two going out on a walk together, you've got maybe five or six now. Um, and in daycare centres, you've got many more dogs that are also going through these same problems that we're talking about. And the sheer volume of those dogs mean that at any daycare and any walker would not be able to give these dogs the individual help that they're going to need to be able to be in these social situations. So it's it's really hard all round to know kind of what to do for the best for anybody's dogs, really, because 
you're being pushed to go back to work you want to put them into a daycare or have a dog walker to come to the house but even that's going to possibly stress your dog out as well so it's it's working with a trainer maybe and a dog walker or a daycare center to be able to kind of meet an even ground where your dog's going to be able to cope and benefit from it rather than being stressed and get worse that's been an absolutely fabulous podcast before we leave um what are your sort of like top tips like what are the couple of things that we can give our listeners today that would help them with just starting to look at how they could get over some of these issues? One that I'm going to say that I've been saying to all of my clients, and I'm sure these ladies all have other really amazing tips. I've just been saying plan ahead. So even if you're not back in the office right now, but it's looking like over the next few months, um, you're going back in the office, start planning ahead, speak with a trainer, get professional help if you need to, but start preparing your dog for what the new normal for you and your dog is going to look like. Mine's been very, very similar, but it's also been um, take it slow um, and manage your own expectations. Um, So have a clear understanding of what you're now expecting your dog to be able to cope with as the new normal and take that really, really slowly. Again, I'm going to reiterate the lady's thoughts there. Plan ahead prepare for the unexpected um and take it slow don't rush it um and i think there was a there was a gentleman called jack hargreaves who uh, a while ago was one of the first group that brought britney spaniels over to the uk their first attempt was halted because of rabies but he eventually managed to bring over two bitches from the same litter and they went into quarantine as a result of quarantine and the dogs needing to get over the quarantine experience one of the sisters went out and worked on a shoot and was absolutely fine. One never would, but it took them a good 18 months to get over that quarantine period. And I think it can be related in, a, in many ways to COVID and to lockdowns. It's not going to be a quick fix, no matter what or if any problems you're working through with your dogs, you are going to have to take it slow, take your time. And don't try and rush it because it's going to take everyone, humans and animals, a while to to come out the other side properly. And start using your friends as well. Go out and do some training sessions in small groups with your friends before you then go and tackle a big group training session or or go out working. So, yeah, prepare your dog. They're great tips. And the ones that you've just touched on there, Gemma, they are things that could help us prepare for Christmas as well, because Christmas means we're all going to be back inside. We're not going to be in lockdown, hopefully, but the whole family is going to be around the dogs as well. So some of those sort of top tips we can definitely use to make sure that we don't re- make the problems reoccur over the Christmas period. Thank you, ladies, for your time on this podcast. It's been absolutely wonderful, as always. And join us next week when we'll be discussing another working dog problem.